So here again with Patrick Antonius, and Patrick, you've played pretty much every top player in the world. You know, people come and they take their shots, and a lot of players stick around. You've played the wild ones, the loose ones, the tight ones, every type of player in the book. Let's talk a little bit about advanced level play and playing these players that are aggressive. You know, how do you handle these guys that are these just aggressive players? What do you do? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, well, basically, basically, you never play a table where everybody's aggressive. And um, you have to play every single player individually. So what do, you, what do you have to do is do you have to spot every player who's playing like medium aggressive, who's playing tight, who's playing very aggressive, and all the positions of the table and also the stack sizes. So, so that's a normal poker table. There's going to be always tight players and always aggressive ones. And sometimes you have to change your game plan based on if there's too many aggressive players on the table and they're just overly aggressive, it's, it's much better for you to play tight and have a better starting hands and get an advantage based on those. Based on that, you're going to have a better starting hand and maybe more positions in your play and, and so on. But, but yeah, they they give you a lot of um, a lot of opportunities these aggressive players they give you a lot of opportunities to trap them to uh, check raise them like they usually bet many flops uh, if they have a raise before the flop so you know you're most likely to get a check raising with those guys and and then also um, it's all about the situations in general but but um, also you have to use the information that if they're aggressive they're playing a lot of hands and uh, and um, most likely they don't have big hands when they when they're betting the flop so it gives you more opportunities to bluff them if the player would be a tight player who plays less hands he would start with a much better starting hands and more likely he would hit something big on a flop so it's not as smart to check raise a tight player because he's more likely to have a hand uh, so so they're gonna these aggressive players are gonna they're gonna bring the they're gonna create more blood on the table there's gonna be more more swings because you have to play them differently too you you have to call them down more often on a river because there's bigger chance they're gonna be bluffing so but it's all about being on this what is happening at the moment is he right now bluffing or betting this and and they still have, there's many kind of aggressiveness. There's some people are very aggressive before the flop, and then they tend to check a lot of flops or, or so on. And some people, when they start betting the flops, and if it comes uh, card which doesn't affect the, affect the board too much, they will keep betting usually. And so you gotta, you got to know these patterns with these players. But um, I enjoy a lot, a lot of playing with, with these aggressive players. And um, it's it's nice to have a position on them. Also, also it just gives you more opportunities to bluff them and trap them. I think so because I because they're more likely to bluff and they're more likely to fold their hands if you raise them. So so yeah. Um, Let me ask you a quick question. I I feel like it might be mm. one of my many stupid questions, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna try. Um, when you say you play these aggressive players and they're typically raising before the flop, they're playing so many hands so that you feel they don't have as strong of a hand as normal. That's the kind of range, I guess, the, the way the players talk of what you put them on a, a weaker range than the tight players. So you're likely, when they continuation bet, you know, the mm. flop, to go ahead and check raise or, or, you know, just raise them perhaps there. I would imagine, of course, you'd love to do this with like some type of semi-bluff or a couple overs to the board and you have some outs, but how often mm -hmm. do you fi find yourself like just, even if you just completely airball the flop yourself mm. off of that fact that these guys are raising light and they probably have nothing also, that you yeah. just go ahead and raise there with, with nothing? Yeah. I mean, what it, does that it, look it like? Yeah, Texas Hold'em, I would do it with nothing many times because you only have two cards, so you can't really talk about having a lot of key cards in your hand. But there's other games like Parliament Omaha where 
it's nice to have a like at least one key card which which is very big sometimes in a in a game of of Omaha. If you have a if there's a hard draw on a flop and you have the only naked naked heart in your hand ace, that's um there's only or there's not gonna be really a flush draw out there with the it's very big thing. Yeah, sometimes you can flop uh, in Omaha you can flop a top pair and then, then you can have a pair for the straight draw blockers plus the uh, naked ace so the only thing is left really is like a middle set and top pairs for your opponent and stuff but in Hold'em you can't really have those blocker plays so and um, so you gotta do more with complete error too in that game but but yeah I could add for the playing playing aggressive players like that you always have to know what's going on because because there's many situations because these tight players they create a lot of they create a lot of situations in in poker and tournament poker because when there's like two tightest players in the blinds it makes it much more likely for example like aggressive player to raise because these tight guys they're gonna play only like top premium hands and so then people are gonna start thinking players are thinking that he is racing with very wide range of hands and I'm just gonna three bet here with nothing because he's not gonna be more likely not gonna have a hand to call me, and then uh, this is gonna create more opportunities to other other players because they know what's going on and they might be some guy with no hand putting a fourth bet in or the first racer thinking that you don't have anything big to re raise me and he's gonna put the fourth bet in. And so this is how it's gonna create a lot of a um, lot of just uh, fighting fighting for the pots in uh, and there's going to be a lot of tricky situations in uh, with the tight players and the aggressive players